Hey everyone, this is Suja. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today, this is episode number 10 of bed. So 10 videos and um, 10 past me as well, nine, because this is the present me, right? So to my future self, good job, right? Congratulations. Um, this is great, 10 videos. So today I wanted to start off with sort of just um, my open position here, right? I'm doing these fake trades because fake trading is where it's at. Paper trades really helped me really clarify and see, okay, was I right to be confident? Was I wrong to be confident? Was I not right to be confident? Was I was I completely a genius in this move or not? So by the looks of it, I've made two grand, two, well, nearly three grand just with my Dogecoin, you know? My losses are Bitcoin and Ethereum. So with trading, everybody uh, uh, assumes, you know, it's all to the moon. It's never all to the moon. There's always losses. Um, some trades just don't work out and that's okay, right? As I'm doing all of this, it's really helping me see that, right? It's not just some theoretical thing. It's like, oh yeah, I can see that, hey, you know, my bet on uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin didn't pan out, but hey, Dogecoin, thank you. Thank you for saving me. <laughs> ah, fantastic. So without further ado, let's actually analyze Bitcoin. So bed. Okay, so there's been a little pullback, which is fine. Um, here's the thing, I am a little worried that this may continue, right? As long as it's not anywhere near, say, 57,000, I should be fine, everything should be fine. Um, there's been a cross, which again, I'm not a fan of crosses, right? Look at this. After this cross, there had been three of these. So since there's been a cross, we might have a pullback. And that's an issue because, you know, the Renko is saying, okay, we may not have a pullback, but it's not complete. And then the Kage is also saying we may not have a pullback because it's not complete. So we might actually shoulder out here, come back down, probably around this area, the 50,000 mark again, and then go back up. But I don't think that's likely. I think, I think we're gonna go higher, at least somewhere around here, at least the 60 to 64,000 area, and then come back down. Because I just, for whatever reason, I'm not seeing this move, right? I um, I just don't see the price break move, but it could be happening that way. So, you know, very, very low uh, push upwards. So we could have a big push down. We can come back to 52,000, which will be fine. If we do come back to 52,000, I'm just gonna make a horizontal line here at 52,000. As long as we don't break 52,000, we should be fine, right? Um, and that's okay. If you make a shoulder here and then we come here and we, even if we break 52,000, you know, there's still a couple other things we don't wanna break. But 52,000 is one of those things we don't wanna break. <laughs> Cause that's a bad sign, right? That's a structural sign. And you know, we might have one of these, you know, pullbacks. How big of, of a pullback was this? Hold on a second. Yeah we might have a 14% pullback and that's to be expected. Bitcoin is like this. So, you know, <laughs> when you play in Bitcoin land, you gotta expect the 14,000 pullbacks or sorry, 14% pullbacks. So that's for Bitcoin. Let's go to Ethereum. Why did I cancel it? Okay, there we go. So I already made some lines with Ethereum because I could. With Ethereum, I made lines based on the EMAs and SMAs. So, you know, 21 day moving average, I think this is a 55. Yeah, I have 10, 30, 200, which is my red, blue, and uh, purple dotted lines. And then these are the other ones. These are my EMAs. So with my EMAs, what they're saying is, yeah, we should be fine. Um, I'm gonna show you guys the autofib extension. If we can break 2124, then we're gonna go up to 2600. So we're kind of testing around this range. We might come down between these two ranges, basically these ranges right here, this area. All right, there's probably something I can draw here. So 
so this area right here. If we can sort of bounce around in this area and then break it, then it's like, <laughs> it's still 1.618, uh, which is again, 2,600. And then from that point on, it just, you know, you're, you're looking at lots of cash, right? You're looking at what? 4,293. So yeah, once we break this range, it's probably gonna be this range and then this range. So, you know, it looks good. We might have a slight pullback because, you know, the Stokes are saying, um, if there's a cross here, we might have a pullback, a little, little pullback and then go back up. But in terms of, say the price break chart, yeah, we're kind of hanging around here. The price break is saying we're still strong, so it's fine. There hasn't been any crosses, so we should be fine. And then again, like I said yesterday, um, we have one hammer, so it's gonna be two, three, four, five, six hammers until we end up up there. And like I said here, we might have one of these big, big moves, right? So, you know, the Kage is also showing upward movement. So little pullback maybe, but then mostly it's gonna go up in my opinion. And then let's go to Dogecoins, which apparently I was right on. So, you know, brag on, right? So momentum have shifted. If I had entered the trade here, I could have probably read it this one, but I entered it way earlier, I think. Um, I entered somewhere around here, I think. And then, you know, for me, the profit here is, you know, right here. Once it breaks this area, the 0.08101800. So, you know, so far so good. Apparently that strategy would have worked. So could have made five grand if I was actually trading real money, but I probably would have lost some more money. So, you know, it's okay. Again, the idea of trading is, you know, you, you have losers and winners in trades, right? Your trades are like ball pitches with money. Some work, others don't. Some hit a home run, others don't hit a home run. So it's kind of like a game and you know, it's fun, it's a fun game with fake money, but with real money, you know, you get emotional. So uh, to my future self, never trade on margin, mainly because if you end up, uh, you know, owing margin, then not good for you. That doesn't suit your sort of financial goal and vision of your own life. And the second thing is uh, keep trading with fake money every day until you get so good at it that it's like second nature and you can tell, you can, you can use your own intelligence and actually do the real, you know, you can actually play in the real market without losing everything and gaining more than you lose. And so you become more consistent in the end. And that kind of does it for me. Again, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. You know, if you have any ideas, put it down there and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.